Filter bubbles and echo chambers. It can be hard to make rational sense of the world. But is your brain your own worst enemy? Here are four of the many ways your brain's processing shortcuts are playing tricks on you. Welcome to cognitive bias. Understanding a bit about it could change the way you see the world. So here goes. A recent peer-reviewed scientific study found caffeine consumption is strongly linked with developing cancer. On this scale, to what extent do you agree or disagree with the findings of this study? Relax, this study is fake. However, your answer will be directly influenced by the amount of caffeine you drink. Cognitive bias number one, self-serving bias. Self-serving bias is your brain's strong natural tendency to interpret information in such a way as to unduly favour itself. In this experiment, caffeine drinkers rated the study's validity consistently lower than non-caffeine drinkers. Subjects with a negative personal stake in the outcome of research were less convinced by the data. How irrational! Your brain will reject perfectly viable information simply because it has negative implications for your personal beliefs and behaviours. Likewise, it will tend to eagerly accept information with positive implications, even if that information is flawed or inconclusive. So why does your brain do this? Self-serving bias protects one's fragile ego from threat and injury. That last group presentation you gave was either a success thanks to your brilliant work or was a failure thanks to everyone else. You've got to look after that ego. OK, a new thought experiment. Look at this parking. What do you think of the red car's driver? If you thought poorly of the driver's character, you have performed cognitive bias number two. Fundamental attribution error. This is your brain's attempt to explain behaviour by placing undue emphasis on internal characteristics of the person rather than external factors. Consider that just moments ago these cars were parked in a way that left the red car's driver with little option. Does that change your opinion? Fundamental attribution error is often performed when driving. I'm speeding because I'm in a rush, whereas they're speeding because they're an inconsiderate maniac. Your brain has limited capacity to interpret the world. It can observe the badly parked car and understand that someone put it there, but that's it. To theorise about the historical arrangement of the cars, or the situational needs of the driver, is a complex and potentially unending use of finite cognitive resources. On to the next one. Here's a famous experiment by Peter Wason. Play along at home. Subjects were given a three-number sequence, told that it follows a simple rule and asked to figure out the rule. They were allowed to suggest their own number sequences and told to continue until they were confident that they had cracked the rule. Were you thinking of a sequence like this? This follows the rule. And another, something like this. This also follows the rule. So what is the rule? It's to multiply by two, right? Well, no. Your brain just performed another cognitive bias. Confirmation bias. The actual rule is any sequence of numbers in ascending order. So what went wrong? Your brain landed on its first hypothesis, multiply by two. From there, every suggested number sequence was used to confirm that initial hypothesis rather than actually test it. A rational approach would be to attempt to disprove this hypothesis by suggesting other number sequences that didn't follow it. But your brain isn't rational. It has a tendency to search for, interpret, favour and recall information that confirms its pre-existing beliefs, numbers or otherwise. Confirmation bias is based on limitations in the brain's ability to handle complex tasks and the shortcuts that it uses as a result. The brain finds it really difficult to test alternative hypotheses in parallel. It's good, but it's not that good. OK, so you've learned a few cognitive biases. You're now prepared to combat them in your own brain. After all, knowing is half the battle, right? Well, not exactly. 
That's cognitive bias number four, the G.I. Joe fallacy. The action figure and TV character, G.I. Joe, famously said, knowing is half the battle. When it comes to cognitive bias, he was well out. Knowing is one thing, but habits, situations and other processes still rule the roost. Self-awareness won't beat it. You may know a badly parked car does not make a bad person, but you'll still feel negatively towards them. You may know your brain will take shortcuts to confirm the hypotheses it already holds, but it will still take those shortcuts. You may know that your brain will protect your ego at every turn, but the ego security will still be out in force. So knowing about cognitive biases is way less than half the battle. Even knowing the G.I. Joe fallacy about knowing about cognitive biases is still way less than half the battle. Funny how your brain can pontificate about its own limitations but do almost nothing about them. But in the true spirit of cognitive bias, you will be able to point it out in others. Good luck with that.